Okay, the next speaker is uh, the brother of the first speaker. All right. So I'm going to bring up Zach Harvey. Zach is the owner of Manchu... Ma what? Hold on. Let me Hi, I'm going to introduce Zach. All right. Zach is the owner of Manch Fu Marketing and the co-owner of Stomp Romp Guitars and is currently residing in Manchester, New Hampshire. A lot of New Hampshire people here. A free stater who moved... So now I know how to get an easy round of applause. Free State Project. All right. A free stater who moved from Israel last December. Zach is especially interested in ways that Bitcoin and other peer-to-peer -peer technologies will affect the future markets worldwide. Please keep the energy going for Mr. Zach Harvey. All right. So you have this great idea for a startup of a flying device that's also a sprinkler system. And you, your idea is for it to get rid of all the current sprinkler and drip systems for houses or maybe even um, farms in the future. You call it the quadcropter, the drip drone. And you're really excited about this idea. You think it may be the future of people watering their gardens or farms. It can fly in. Was that supposed to happen? There we go. Formation, if you need to. You don't only need one. They can be swarming all around your neighbor's place if perhaps you want to drop something other than water. Which brings me to the question of why do we even have businesses? Why do we start businesses? It's because we have a creation, we have an idea, and we want to implement them. And that's really what businesses really are. They're implementations of ideas into goods. So we want to be in charge and stay in control. And again, the whole point is being an entrepreneur is to take initiative and be in control of your, of your own creation. Now, that's great and all, but when it comes to move money finally moving hands, when you get money in or move it out, and that's out of your control, that's a lot of control that you lose for, from your business. And uh, what I'm gonna talk about a bit is how Bitcoin allows you to regain that control and make it more of a direct issue from you to the customer, the customer back to you, that eliminates the middleman the unwanted middleman, that is. Now, some businesses are smaller. You could be a 12-year-old watering the plants in your neighborhood, and that's your market right there. You could be a bar in a city, and then your market would be that city. For the quadcropter, you would probably want a bit of a larger market. And in fact, you'd want to reach the whole entire world. But then again, we get back to the same issue of if you do not have complete control of the money, some people may not want that to happen. And so as you'll see in the Bitcoin magazine that you just received, um, WordPress just recently decided to accept Bitcoin for their services. <laughs> which is a pretty big deal for Bitcoin. So in the blog when they were announcing um, why they started accepting this weird alternate currency, um, Andy Skelton of WordPress wrote, PayPal alone blocks access from over 60 countries and many credit card companies have similar restrictions. Some are blocked for political reasons, some because of higher fraud rates, and some for other financial reasons. So, you finally get your online store up and running with your quad cropters, um, and someone orders from um, a country that may not accept credit cards for political reasons, and that's it. That market is blocked. You will no longer be able to ship to that country. Now, politics aren't the only thing that may, uh, the only reason that may limit you from shipping to that country. There are also scams, and that's legitimate. Um, in my guitar store, my online guitar store, I've received um, 
several scam attempts where I woke up in the morning and saw someone ordered five guitars and three pedals and I felt pretty good. And then I looked down, I'm like, okay, um, this is shipping to Malaysia. That's kind of cool. I like shipping anywhere in the world. And after feeling that this might be a little suspicious, um, I went into the, uh, uh, on the credit card account and saw that the credit card was from Canada. So I started feeling something was off. Now, fortunately, I was smart enough and I didn't ship all the five guitars out because I would never get that money. I would, the card went through and a few weeks later it would be charged back. Um, if you're a larger company and you just have someone shipping stuff out all the time, um, you will get burnt. So after getting a few of those orders, it started getting really annoying because I had to keep on putting the products back on eBay and they kept on charging me for that. And I just decided, all right, well, it's not worth it for me. I'll just only allow countries um, that, you know, certain Western countries that I know I will not get scam requests from. Um, and so now I accept about, on the website, I accept about 10% of the countries where I started off with. So for PayPal and credit card, um, that's really all of my market. Now, with Bitcoin, all of the transactions are final and there are zero chargebacks. So if somebody wants to order something, either say, uh, in your case, the quadcropter from your online site, they can do that from Malaysia with Bitcoin. And you'll have nothing to worry about because you have the money. It's like cash. So you don't have to worry about, well, I don't know, maybe I'll never get the money. Because unlike credit cards and unlike PayPal, you will always get the money with Bitcoin. All right, so let's talk about things on, on, on a bit of a larger transaction. How do you pay Hans? Now, you should know this since you own Quadcropter, but Hans is your brilliant engineer. And he is the one, as you can see here, who has figured out how to make sense of a Quadcropter. For instance, where do you get the water from? I mean, it can get pretty heavy if you just take a huge water balloon. So he's figured out a way to harvest it from the air, which is pretty smart, and that's why you've decided to pay him 10,000 euro for the design, which isn't really a lot, but you get my point. So how do you send the money to Hans? You could try it by wire. It would take about three days, uh, maybe four, lots of paperwork, and it would be even more paperwork if it's over $10,000, which 10,000 euro are, um, you could try PayPaling it to him, but I, I think you'd find that the fees are a bit prohibitive. Um, you could um, send him gold, but that would probably be the same issue, even worse. Or you could go to Europe and try to make 10,000 euro and just give it to him. And today, wire transfers to and from abroad are slow, expensive, and of course, heavily regulated. If it's over $10,000, even more paperwork and scrutiny, in fact, if you do want to send a wire or cash or receive it from abroad, you may be looking at a form that looks something like that. Now, you probably don't like seeing forms like this. I know I don't, and that's only one page. I just didn't really want to fill up my whole slides with all of the forms. But that's just for receiving $10,000. So if you have a big order from your distributor in... Um, say, Belgium, and he wants to give you money, that's not going to be so easy. On the other hand, um, if he's like, hey man, I love Bitcoin, can I send you Bitcoin for the quadcropters? Then the form would probably look something more like that. <laughs> I like that more. So, why walk on the wire when you can leap and bound with Bitcoin? It is the best way to move and, and transact and move money from one country to the other. It is direct. Unlike any other payment, tr payment system in the world, it is the only way for me to move money from one country to another directly without anyone in between. Sheep for gold. Now, there is something incredible, incredibly simple about 
bartering, about the idea about bartering, is I have something you want, you have something I want, I like brownies, you like sheep, let's trade. And um, obviously the problem with that is there aren't that many brownies that are worth a sheep. And so we kind of had to figure something out to say, okay, uh, so I like the brownie, but I would like something else too. And eventually they came, figured out that IOU notes are kind of cool and they work, or, or gold um, for that sense. And then that's when we usually call them transactions. So today you think of bartering and transactions of these two different things, but they're not really that different. If we didn't have institutions in place of transactions and bartering, then they wouldn't really be any different at all. It's just, you have something I want, I have something you want. And so for me, that's a big point about Bitcoin. Supply and demand does not need a middleman. You do not need dollars or euros for free trade to work. Um, and Bitcoin simplifies everything. So it works outside of the institutions. It enables incredibly simple transactions regardless of physical location. It really doesn't matter where you are as long as you have an internet connection. Um, you can transfer money to people and, and get what you want in return. Um, no one is controlling it. It's completely up to you and it's direct. And in my opinion, that's exactly what makes a free market freer. It's eliminating the friction is what truly creates a free and global market. So if there's nothing in between me here and um, the quadcropter consumer in Africa, then there's nothing stopping it. There's no friction. I can send him one, he can send me the money directly. There's nothing stopping from that. I don't have to worry about if the credit cards work um, in Africa, if I can PayPal money to him, it's not an issue. I can just give it to him directly. It's like giving someone cash. Now, that's another thing. There is no discrimination between informal markets and formal markets in Bitcoin. So when we think about an informal market, it might be um, a kid selling lemonade even though he doesn't have a license for doing so. That would be an informal market. It doesn't make him a bad person. It just means that he's not currency, currently licensed and he may not, may or may not pay taxes for that lemonade. Um, but if you want to buy lemonade from him, then it's an informal market. A formal market would be, of course, something that is all above law regulated and such, and Bitcoin simply does not care. It doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't go through any institution that it has to ask that question, is this a formal or informal market? It's just like, um, where do you want me to go? And um, for me, that's a big deal, because whenever I deal with a bureaucracy like that forum we just, we just saw, or um, the idea of, uh, uh, well, you filled it out with a, a black pen, and uh, we can only accept this if you fill it out with a blue ballpoint pen, so you're going to have to go and fill out another one of these forms. You just feel ridiculous. You're like, why? This doesn't make any sense. You're making me do things that don't make any sense at all. And you're just sitting there filling out another form, or sometimes you have to come back the next day because they're closed. And um, with Bitcoin, it's the exact opposite. They're like, yes, all you have to do is, um, if you want to wire money to Hans, so just uh, fill out this form, that form, this form, um, wait two days here, take this IRS form, and it, it'll be fine. And then you're just like, can I just press this button? And that's what Bitcoin does. It's just, I just want to press this button. And so for me, that makes bureaucracy look ridiculous. Why go around in hoops, spend days getting money to someone in Germany when I can just press a button? Ah, so this is what I ex expect to see more and more of um, in the future, of course. And um, I don't know if you know this or not, but Argentina is cracking down on moving foreign exchange, especially dollars outside of their country. And they now have a 15% tax on any um, credit card transaction um, out of their country. So if I want to sell a quadcropter to someone in Argentina and they pay me by credit card, they're going to have to automatically pay 15% more. Um, with Bitcoin, they won't. There's no way to tax Bitcoin. 
So that's another example of what we could call an informal market. And the other thing is, um, of course, I could have someone in Africa who built a, an add-on for my quadcopter that, say, allows it to go for longer distances or so. And um, he may not be a licensed inventor, and yet he can still sell me the add-ons or any customers. Um, and so I think there are really a lot of great reasons for Bitcoin to be accepted by businesses small and large, informal, formal, it doesn't really matter for Bitcoin. And it took a few years for the internet to become a friendly place for businesses. It, it took a while for people to really know what the internet was. And, but eventually it grew. And in 1994, 1995, Amazon launched their site. And it took a while for people to think that was anything special. Um, and it, in fact, did take another few years for the e-commerce to explode, but that was huge for businesses. Um, and so I really expect Bitcoin to explode in the next few years. Um, we've seen it go from zero to 13.7 in, in just three short years, and it is gaining more and more popularity. And so when I talk about the block market, it's not about a market being blocked. It's the blockchain market, which is exactly the opposite. It's actually an unblocked market. It opens up the market completely for any transaction, for you as a business, to go directly to your customers um, without any mid unwanted middleman. And um, that is definitely why I am excited about it. Yes. Thank you. And, of course, if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer. All right, thank you. Oh, oh, all right, there is a good question. How does one uh, tell people that they are accepting Bitcoin for their goods and services? What's the, the normal procedure for doing that? You mean if you have, a, a, say, a retail or any service and you sell, want to announce that you accept it? I want it? to announce that I accept Bitcoin. How well, do I do it? Well, right now, um, I mean, there are, there's definitely the Bitcoin forum, and it's still small, so people still get excited every time there's a new business that accepts Bitcoin. Um, that would be one good way of doing it. The other way is um, on a website. There are also, I think, um, Wikipedia articles that list a lot of the businesses that, um, that accept Bitcoin. Um, but I would just say have it on big on your website is definitely one way of letting people know that you accept Bitcoin. Okay. Because I'm new at this. Is does if I announce it with a tag, would it would it have a link to something? Because again, this would be an opportunity to open the conversation for people that don't even know it exists. So they would say for that type of person, they would say, well, what's this? Well, so how would I then um, further the conversation and, and enable that person to learn about it from my site where I'm s trying to promote the fact that I'm selling this product and I'm accepting Bitcoins? How do I link, what do I link to or how do I Well, there's, there's at least, uh, there's one really good um, YouTube video that's been out for a pretty long time called WeUseCoins.com we, we that, that does a really good job of explaining um, um, a bit more about Bitcoin to just anyone who has no idea. Um, but it's, it's probably always a good idea just to write some, a little bit on your website about, hey, what is this Bitcoin thing and, and why am I accepting it? Um, it it's revolutionary and, and um, nobody knows about it just yet. So this is, I, as the way I see it, and WordPress is part of this, is this is just really the beginning of it getting out there and of people starting to ask the question. And I, another big thing was, was the, uh, uh, when the European... Union, um, the, the European Central Bank, um, put out that review of uh, virtual currency schemes. Um, they heard about it, they're thinking about it, and that's something that wouldn't have happened three years ago when, when nobody took it seriously at all. Any other questions? Hey, Jack, or Zach. Yes. 
You have to go up to the microphone, Matt. <laughs> As a business, how do you accept Bitcoin? Like that's, that's an excellent question. So um, if you have an online site, um, you can integrate it in, in with the system. And what we've been doing at our guitar store is we use Magento, and we have a BitPay, we have a BitPay plugin. That makes it incredibly, system, incredibly easy. In fact, um, you can decide if you want to accept the Bitcoin in Bitcoin or if you want to accept Bitcoin orders in dollars, which some people may prefer at this point where they want to accept Bitcoin, but they just don't really want to hold on to a lot of Bitcoin right now. Um, you could just have a plug-in that automatically sends it right to your dollar account and you can, don't have to worry about it at all if that's what you prefer. Yes. Is anything uniquely going on in Israel with Bitcoin because of the nature of Israel and what they have to do in the world? Um, well, I think in Israel in general, uh, a lot of the people are really excited about technology, and there is a Bitcoin exchange in Israel, and there are people that are definitely interested in it. Um, I don't know if is I mean, I don't know if there's anything really special going on in Israel um, or the the Palestinian Authority. Um, um, or territories as far as that's concerned, but it definitely would help. It would probably help the Palestinians a lot more than it would help the Israelis because they have a harder time with markets in general. They don't have as, as a free market as, as Israel does. But there are definitely a lot of markets that need it more, such as Iran, um, Argentina right now, um, or any markets that, that really have a lot of trouble with their currency and and, and Overregulation. Greece. Greece, right? Thanks. In. Uh, given that Bitcoin is so revolutionary, do you think it's uh, do you think it's worrying for vendors that they might uh, get extra attention from the authorities, from the imperial authorities in this country? I don't think a, a retailer would have that much to worry about because I mean. In a way, it, it, you can look at it kind of like a drug dealer and a user. So, I mean, if they really wanted to go after all of the users, it would be kind of difficult. Only, it's not even illegal yet, so it's not a problem at this point. But um, I don't see, it, it's really difficult to, I mean, I could imagine that if um, the U.S. government um, decided to, to make Bitcoin completely illegal, then some business would say, hey, I'm out. You know, I don't want this on my site. At the very least, I don't want this on my site. They may do it something more underground. But at this stage, there's, I don't think there's anything really to worry about at all. Maybe if you were an exchange, you may have something more to worry about. <laughs> right, or GLBSE. All right, thank you very much.